G'day and welcome back for another Space Engineers tutorial. Today, I'm going to be talking through how I go about building a crane truck. And this is something I love to do. I'm not an expert by any extent, but I do build a lot of these things. So I can show you some of the things that might be best avoided and might allow you to enjoy it as much as I have. When designing your truck frame upon which you're going to mount your crane, there are a few things to keep in mind to optimize its ability to stay upright. Because the crane arm is effectively a lever that is going to be working as hard as it can to flip your truck. And the more you can do to prevent that, the less you have to repair of both the load and the truck. Ideally, you want your truck to be heavy. Heavy enough that it's hard to flip, but not so heavy that it can't move itself once it's carrying the load. And that's why this little thing has two batteries. Batteries are fairly heavy, so this makes it reasonably heavy compared to the load that I have imagined for a truck this small. You can also make a nice wide wheelbase. This is relatively wide with three blocks in between the 3x3 three three suspensions, but you can go pretty seriously wide, like the seven between these 5x5s five fives over here on the Dongoose. All these things help, but really the ultimate protection to flipping is adding yourself a way to lock to the ground. Much like crane trucks in the real world use outrigger stabilizers to keep themselves from tipping over, you can also do something a little bit space engineers and add yourself a piston, grab yourself a landing gear, or a mag plate if you want to be fancy and have it automatically locked to itself. That's unfortunate. So let's grab our magnetic plate, unlock that, turn off auto lock, and now we can control this piston. So what I would normally do is set up a maximum distance that I think is about right. So let's say we're probably about a meter above the ground and then hit reverse. If that's ready to lock down the bottom there, we can grab that magnetic plate, click lock, and now this thing cannot flip over. Well, it sort of can, but it requires the piston to do some really weird things. And if you've managed to apply that much force, just enjoy the fireworks. Now that we've got a truck base secured to the ground, we can start building our crane and thinking about how much we want to be able to manipulate the object that we've picked up once we've picked it up. Do we want to be able to spin it around? Do we want to be able to lift it up higher, drop it down lower, those sorts of things. And for me, I tend to go with, as a start point, something vaguely similar to an extendomatic human arm. What I mean by that is I start with what I think of as a shoulder joint. So we start with a rotor, and on that we place a hinge. This ends up being fairly similar in function to your own shoulder. The next element we're going to have, which our arms don't have, is going to be a couple of pistons. That's just so that we can reach a bit further. So we place one maybe two. So this is now going to be able to extend out to six meters and contract back to two. Next up, we're going to add the elbow, which we might do with a littler hinge just so it doesn't look quite so weird. And we want this in line with the shoulder hinge, at least for this purpose. I can imagine some cranes where you want it the other way around, but I think in this case, let's keep it in line. And what I would suggest you do is make sure that those two little markers on the left hand side of this hinge are on the same side of each of the hinges as you place them so that they're all oriented the same way it makes life a lot easier later i'm going to pop that there and then we'll do another pair of pistons for the next segment so now we've got a shoulder we've got an elbow we've got a forearm and then at the end we need to have a hand hands are hard but to get something that's fairly capable a relatively simple system that i like to use is start with a rotor go to a hinge doesn't matter which way you wrote, place it around, and then go to another rotor. And then on the end of that, place either your landing gear or your magnetic plate. Now that we've got all these pieces in place, let's start looking at how we're going to control them. I'm going to start with some vanilla methods and then look at some scripted methods. To start off with, let's label all our parts. I would normally use a mod called Build Vision, but there's another way you can do this, which is first up in the cockpit grab our advanced rotor base and name this something meaningful. In this case, I'm going to call it crane base rotor. Next up, we've got our three by three hinge. There's only one of them, so I know which one it is. And we'll call this one crane hinge shoulder. 
just to keep along with those terms because I find it makes it very easy for me to remember what's what. Now the rest of these are going to be a bit more difficult to define because I don't know if this is the end hinge or if this is the end hinge. I could waggle them about a bit and figure it out that way. So do this and then I know that I'm controlling that one. If you're in a position where you can't figure out which hinge is which, what I would do is go through and label them directly. So in this case, to label this hinge and figure out which one it is, we can place a block, we're careful, on the side of the piston part above. Then on that block, we can place a control panel. And with that control panel, access it, and the hinge will be in white. So we now know that this is crane hinge elbow. Obviously, I'm doing this in creative mode. It is no different in survival mode. Everything I do here, you can do exactly the same in survival. Now that I've named everything, we can start setting up a, a little bit of an awkward control scheme. So this one is my basic vanilla method of controlling hinges and pistons and rotors. So we'll start at the lowest part of the vehicle and we'll move our way up. When you're in a cockpit, you have nine hot bars. This can be really useful. If you press control and move between them, you can use that to remember which part you're controlling. And for a crane, that's really, really helpful. If we look at our crane, we start with our rotor at the bottom, that's one. Then we move to our hinge, that's two. Then we've got our pair of pistons, that's three. Then we've got another hinge, four. Another pair of pistons, five. Then a rotor, hinge, rotor. That gives us eight different control points. So what we could do, and what in some situations I think could be a really useful way of approaching this, is set that up across eight different hotbars. So we switch between hotbars to control each next point along the chain. That way hopefully when you jump out of the truck and come back to it a week later, you'll still have an idea of what you're controlling and where you're controlling it from. Hotbar 1 will be all my normal vehicle controls, hotbar 2 is going to be the start of my crane control. To begin with, we're going to control this rotor. Let's find that rotor for the base, crane base rotor. And we're going to set its torque up to crazy, its braking torque up to crazy. The reason I like setting these to crazy levels is because at some point you're going to. You're going to try and lift something that's too heavy and you're just going to want that extra effort. So just do it now. And then what we're also going to do is we're going to turn the block off. With torque and braking torque, this is what's applied when the block is on. This is what's applied when the block is off. So this will stop the block from moving when you switch it off. We're going to set our velocity to 2. I think 2 is a reasonable start and we can adjust it from there if you want to move more quickly or more slowly. But because it's off, it's not going to start moving. Now, we can exit that, press G and find our rotor. And this is really why we needed to label things. So we grab our crane base rotor, bring it down here and... The first control I like to do is toggle on off and then have a reverse. So to be able to spin this around, all I need to do is turn it on. If it's not spinning the right way, spin it the other way. When it reaches the point that I want it to stop, I turn it off again and we're there. I find it to be a very acceptable way to control a rotor using hotbars. And then we'll do the same to all the other hinges and rotors, increasing their torque, braking torque, switching them off and putting them at a reasonable speed. The next bit's a bit different because we've got our two pistons. So what we want to do is grab our two pistons, these two proximal pistons, and we're going to make a group out of them. Brain, pistons, rocks. Save. And it's this group we're going to manipulate. Same with these distal ones. The reason we put these as a group is because it just makes it easier to control. There's almost no reason you would ever need to move just one piston if it's in line like these two are. Just move both of them slower if you need to move slower. So now we've got that set up, we can add them to our hotbar. We can control pistons a bit differently to the hinges and rotors. What I like to do is grab my proximal pistons. We're going to have retract first, then toggle on off, then extend. So going left to right is retract, on off, extend. Because to me that kind of visually supports what I'm doing. So I want to extend, I'll push out to the right. I want to stop, I can toggle it on off, I want to retract, and we bring it back. Unfortunately, we don't have similar key presses for the hinges and rotors. We don't have ones that go anti-clockwise, clockwise. 
If we did, I'd set them up the same as this. Move on to number five and we'll do the hinge and I'll go through and set these all up and then give a bit of a demonstration of how painful it is to control things this way. <laughs> but it's still one of the best and simplest ways to actually control something like this. Now that we've got this control scheme running across all these hotbars, you might see that there's going to be some annoyance in having to switch between them. However, for me personally, trying to remember them or looking in here and writing it down on a menu up here saying what button does what is similarly annoying. <laughs> so I kind of like this idea. It was one I came up with while working on this tutorial and it's something I'm going to use if I can't use a script. Having everything spread across and being able to switch to which one, just counting them out as I go along, knowing I'm controlling the right thing is just going to be that extra degree of assurance that will give me more confidence to use the cranes how I want. There's something with this design that we might want to consider, which is this is a fairly small truck and it could lift something quite heavy if we restricted the range of motion of the crane. If the crane is picking up something in an arc in front of the vehicle, then it's going to be able to lift up something heavier because we've got more vehicle in front of us, more lever to push against the ground to stop us from flipping. If it's picking up something at the back, we got basically nothing. So if you're lifting something behind this and you don't have this landing gear locked, it's going to be really, really dangerous. To keep this safe, if we forget to use the landing gear, let's limit the range of motion of this rotor down here. I'm going to grab it, select it, and... I know it says 338 over here, but we set a lower limit to minus 45 and an upper limit to 45 while this is locked and off. That'll change and it'll recalibrate so it now sees it as minus 22. Doing changes like this on a rotor on a server can be risky. If you're going to do that, I would suggest also applying a rotor lock before you make those changes as I've had explosive consequences when I haven't done that in the past. So now this is going to be limited to only swing 45 degrees that way and 45 degrees that way. Which should give us pretty much the range of motion where this is going to be safest. With that safety feature in place, we need one more thing. That's the ability to see what we're doing. You can see a lot from third person, but really to be able to see enough, what you want to do is actually apply a camera somewhere on this crane. My preference is to apply a camera on one side of one of these pistons on the distal part as that gives me the ability to see what these three parts are doing, as they're often the trickiest part and the bit that I find most difficult to see while I'm in third person. Make sure the camera text is upright for your preferred upright. And there we go. Add that to our first hotbar with view. And now we need a task. So the task I'm going to do to demonstrate how this works slash how difficult this is, is grab a small cargo container and another one, have them loosely on the ground, and I'm going to stack one on top of the other. So we start by rotating around far enough, let's grab the one on the left, then we're going to extend these pistons, that should be about far enough, grab our elbow hinge, we're going to bend it down, swivel our camera, make sure we're in the right spot, which we aren't, go back, rotate this. Now I'm going to switch over to my camera, let's rotate this so I can bring that hinge downward. It off there. There we go. We're locked again. Let's retract. Let's hop out of the camera. And now we lift. We go back to our shoulder joint. Lift it up. Spin it over. It's about right. <laughs> then we can just haphazardly drop it right on top. Oh, that almost fell off. So you can see this is a feasible way to control a crane and I've controlled many a crane this way before I was able to use scripts, before some of the scripts that I use had been even made and it, it works. It's fiddly but it works. You need a lot of patience to really do much work with a crane like this but it's doable. There are some ways to make this a bit more efficient using the custom turret controller block and if you head over to my custom turret controller tutorial I show a couple of the methods you can use it there. Personally, I don't find it super useful apart from the base control, but it does help a little bit. If you don't want to use the vanilla method because you value your sanity or you've got access to scripts, my preferred script, because it's a nice balance between easy to set up and easy to use, is the piston and rotor keybind script 
by Trekker. There are a few mods that add similar control setups. There are a few other scripts that do more complex things, such as MRM OS, which does inverse kinematics and all sorts of crazy complex stuff that if you can learn how to use it, you will be able to make some impressive designs. Uh, I personally have always struggled with it, though. I've blown up a lot of test crates trying to set it up. But if you can learn it, definitely recommend it because I've seen some really cool stuff with it. But for me, Piston and Rotor Keybinds does the trick and I've used it from everything from this crane in Survival Impossible over probably two years ago now, through to Wrong Way Up, through to the Dongoose in Scavenge Hunt. It's, it's a very easy script to set up. What we need to do is create, first up, another control seat on this rover. The reason we want that is because we're going to be using your normal movement controls to control the crane. And we don't want the main cockpit to be moving the wheels and trying to roll the gyroscopes and all this sort of stuff while we're controlling the crane. And in this case, to keep things sleek, our other control seat is going to be a remote control block. Next up, we're going to add the programmable block. Let's pop it over here. And then we add the script. So to add a script, you need to go to this edit button. If this edit button doesn't exist, it means your world either does not have scripts enabled or you don't have experimental mode enabled. Make sure you fix both of those and then you should get this edit button. Click on edit, click browse scripts, and then find the park script. Now I'll have a link in the description to the workshop page for this so that you can subscribe to this, which you need to do so that it'll show up in this list. Select that, copy to editor, and now we have the script on the programmable block. We click OK. And now what we need to do is we need to grab all of the hinges, rotors, all of the actuators, the pistons, etc. that you want to use with the script and make a group of them with your control block, which in this case is our remote control. So I've got all our rotors, pistons, and hinges. And I've got our remote control block. And we're going to name this group Park. You can change what name this is in the script, but for simplicity, we're just going to stick with the default. So now we have a park group. It's containing all our stuff. We can go back to our programmable block and click recompile. Make sure there's no errors. And there are. Remote control is set to do things it shouldn't be doing. So we don't want our remote control to control thrusters, wheels, or gyros. So we're going to deselect those. We're going to recompile the programmable block. And now we got no errors. So we're happy. This hasn't just checked for errors. What it's also done is gone to each of these blocks and added a whole lot of information in the custom data area. Ta-da! We have a whole bunch of different things listed here. Now these correspond to specific keybinds. By default, these are the equivalent of forward is W, backward is S, left is A, right is D, up is space, down is C, roll left is Q, roll right is E, pitch up is arrow, up, pitch down is arrow down, your left is arrow left, your right is arrow right. These return parts we're not going to look into today, but they're a method for setting your crane to automatically return to its set stock position, so kind of its packed position before you move on to somewhere else. So what we're going to do, since we're looking at the crane base rotor, is we're going to set this to be controlled by A and D, which is left and right. I want it to spin minus 2 RPM when I press the left and 2 when I press right. Hopefully that's the right way around. If it's not, we'll flip them. Click OK. Just to make sure that that's working, let's recompile our programmable block. And then we need to take control of our remote control. Hop in the cockpit, press G, grab our remote. This is just to make things a bit more streamlined later and click control. And we go control. And now we are controlling from the remote control block, which means we can't control the wheels, we can't control the gyros, we can't control the thrusters that don't exist. We can only control the crane. Or we could, except my other control scheme has kind of messed us up. What we need to do is turn all of these things on. Now we can control the crane. So I'm pressing A right now and I'm pressing D and we can move this really, really easily. And it's awesome. Now all I've got to do is set up different keybind controls for each segment as I go along. So for me, what I've done in the past is use A and D for my rotation, space and C for my lift up and down. But if we do things a bit differently, grab our rotor, custom data, let's put these back to zero. 
And let's go your left, minus two, your right, two. Then we'll grab our hinge shoulder. And it, we're going to apply pitch up is going to be minus two. And then pitch down is two. Go to our program over block, click recompile. And now I can use my mouse to control my crane. You may have noticed that there are only six different ways of moving something here. But we have eight different segments to move as we saw with our hotbar setup. So how are we going to make that work? Well, if we go back to our programmable lock, click custom data, we have this thing that says main. If we hit enter and then we go wrist and click OK and recompile, we can now have a look at one of these, click on custom data, and you'll see there's a second section. This is for park wrist, this is for park main. So you can use this to allow you to have two different control modes. With a crane like this, I would have a base control setup that controls the base part of it, the lifting and the elbow, and then a second part that controls just the little wrist fine motions. You could also take this a step further and have two different control modes for the base. One that moves things quickly because this is painfully slow, and one that moves things slowly because sometimes you do want to be able to control things a bit more delicately and not end up smacking them into the ground too hard and potentially even exploding them. Or just... There we go. <laughs> yeah, that'd eventually explode. <laughs> so sometimes you do want to have finer controls. So setting yourself up a control scheme that does fine and fast is quite helpful. So let's set one up. We'll go back to our programmable block, click on custom data, and we'll have main, and then we'll have fast. And then we'll have wrist. Click OK. Again, recompile. Let's set this up for our crane base rotor. Go to custom data. We've got our main, which is minus two and two. And then we've got our wrist. And then we've got our fast. So our fast, for your left, your right. Let's set it to minus eight and eight. So we'll go four times faster. Go to our shoulder hinge. Do the same. Now to switch between these two different control modes, press G, grab our programmable block, bring it down here and click run. In the argument box, put the name of the profile. So we're going to have main on number one. We're going to have fast on number two. We're going to have wrist on number three. I'm currently controlling this in main mode, so it's still at that 2 RPM, it's quite slow. Not that slow, but it is quite slow. If I want to go faster, I can press 2 and it'll switch to fast mode. And then we get this, and we can move things around a bit more quickly. Parts of this crane, you need to move two parts at the same time. For example, the pistons. So if we want to do that, it's really quite simple. We basically just copy the information from one to the other. So let's set up Prox1 custom data let's move it forward when we do forward so let's go with 0.5 meters a second because we're going to do two so it's going to go at one meter per second overall and backwards will be zero minus 0 0.5 we can select all of that copy go here select all of that paste recompile our programmable block and now when i press forward and backwards, I can control both of these pistons simultaneously. One thing you may have noticed while I've been moving this around quickly is that it is wobbling a lot. And one last tip I've got for you is that we should apply share inertia tensor to everything except this rotor. So let's do that. We grab all of these parts, say crane, and click share inertia tensor. The whole thing stiffens up. Let's go back into control. And you can see now when I move around, it is a lot smoother. This will slightly decrease your ability to carry very, very heavy stuff, but for the stability benefit, I honestly think it's worth it. Hopefully you guys have found this to be useful and will help you build your own crazy crane contraptions. In the description, there'll be a link to the park script by Trekker. I'll also include a link to the MRM OS script as it's really cool and you should check it out and see if you can do better at it than I can. I will also include a link to this particular crane so you can have a look at it 
and have a play around with it in case you're struggling with your own designs. I would also recommend having a look in the comments as it would not surprise me if there are some really useful tips added to this over time as that's kind of how every other tutorial I've made has gone. There are some really awesome people in this community that have done some really cool things and that are always good at sharing that experience with everybody else. If you've got any other questions related to Space Engineers, let me know. I've got a couple of tutorials coming up that I'm really excited about as well as some new series. So there's all that and plenty more to come and I will see you then.